As always, we're going to start with the reading of the law. We're going to start in Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of, is the, Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. Okay, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with ever secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Revelations 22, 14, and 15. Revelations 22, 14, and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, our sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Brothers and sisters, as always, we start with the reading of the law to remind ourselves that the law is still good, just as all of the Lord's statutes and judgment that he commands us to do. We have to do them. They have not, they have not been nailed to the cross. And I'd like to say good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, Brother Matt. And once again, welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class, where we read the entire Bible <clears throat> by subject and by title. And as always, brothers and sisters, it's a blessing for me to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And as I always say, so we can edify each other in his holy word. But that's what the Holy Convocation is all about, edifying and uplifting each other. Today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is... Baptism, is it necessary? The baptism, is it necessary? Brothers and sisters, anyone that calls themselves a Christian or a Baptist should really be stressing the importance and the necessity of the baptism, especially since they reject everything else in the Old Testament. But they do not. The, the so-called Christian community, they try to downplay the baptism. You know, they'll tell you it's not important or it's not necessary or it's a personal choice. It is your choice to get it or don't get it. But the Lord say, repent and be baptized. So you have to do it in order to come under the new covenant I tell people all the time, if the baptism wasn't important, why did the Lord give it to us? 
the Lord, the, 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 the most high God, God is by, he's not a just because God. Everything he does just has a purpose. There's a reason for it. You know, the Lord, think about it, the Lord, all his wisdom, he don't have time to just do stuff just because. He's not a, a one of those waiting for the moment to say, I got you type of God. But the, but the baptism, brothers and sisters, is important because you, you enter into the new covenant, which is the covenant coming under the blood of Jesus. But brothers and sisters, what, 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 when I was growing up in a southern Baptist or, or MB, a missionary Baptist church in the south, we, the baptism was something that was stressed. I, they didn't do it right, but they would make sure you, I think I was like 11, 12 years old. My grandmother made me get the baptism. And they would tell you can't do it. Well, you got to sit on the morning's bench. I didn't know if they were saying morning's bench or morning's bench because it's always in the evening, so I didn't know what they were talking about. And if they were saying morning's bench, I'm like, what a morning for if I'm getting baptized? They say it's a good thing. Well, they say you couldn't play baseball. You couldn't do nothing. Why? You, it was a week. You couldn't do nothing for that whole week. But I didn't know. I mean, you know, I'm 12, 11, 12 years old. Didn't know what I was getting into. But at least they knew that the baptism was necessary. But what happened, brothers and sisters, over time, these big evangelist, te televangelist churches, they decided, well, we don't want to lose no members, so tell them it's baptism not necessary. They, they couldn't figure out how to baptize all these people all over the, the country. So they downplayed but brothers and sisters, it is, it is necessary, and not only is it necessary, you have to be baptized right. And you got to know what it means, what the baptism means. So today we're going to cover that, brothers and sisters. We're going to get into this lesson today. We're going to cover the baptism, because the Lord say baptized a certain way. You have to be baptized a certain way. And you got to do something before you get that baptism. We're going to look at that. Let's start this in Mark, the 16th chapter. Mark, the 16th chapter. I'm going to pick it up at 14. Mark 16, we're going to pick it up at 14. And go ahead, brother. After he appeared unto the eleven, as they said at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And this is Jesus after he had risen, and he came to the disciples, and they saw him. They didn't believe him. They, they weren't sure if it was him, but go ahead. And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. So he told them, Go unto all all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to everybody. He said, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every, and the gospel is the coming of the kingdom. Because that's what Jesus was preaching when he was here. But go ahead, brother. He that believeth and, and is baptized okay. shall be saved. Okay, so he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So you have to believe on this word. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So Jesus is telling you, you have to be baptized in order to get that salvation. Because you got to come under the blood covenant. Go ahead. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And he that believeth not shall be damned. So if you don't believe, if you don't believe, in this, why you would even get in, in why you even get baptized? He said you have to believe and be baptized. You got it both. Like I said, certain things you got to do before you get this baptism, brothers and sisters. That's just how important. Like during the pandemic, when everything was shut down, this young lady called me. 
say, uh, somebody told me that you all do the water baptism and, and you all, you know, believe in the truth. Yeah, say, that's right, sister. Uh, we do the water baptism. We try to follow everything according to what does say the Lord the best we can. Well, I got a cousin who has uh, COVID and, and, and he's not sure if he's going to make it. And he want to get baptized. Now, we're, we're shut down. Now, we, he want to get baptized. I said, well, is he a member? No. Are you a member? No. But his church won't do it for him. And I'll go call him to see if you would do it for him. I'm like, well, I mean, do, do he believe? Has he been circumcised? Well, I don't know. But if we really want him to get baptized, can you do it? I'm thinking to myself, I had COVID twice. And you tell me this person got COVID and he's sick? I'm like, well, sister, you know, we do the baptism. Call Brother D-Bed. I'm mm-hmm. telling myself, him and Jeremy, they young. They the immune system stronger than mine. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let them take that risk. Got off that phone. I don't even think I gave Brother D-Bed a number. I got off that phone so quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They haven't had COVID twice. The Lord might say, oh, you're testing me now. <laughs> but if you don't believe, why would you even get baptized? And like, and I wouldn't even waste my time knowing that you have not, that you know nothing about what you're getting into. That's why, brothers, we tell people, we can't tell people when to get baptized, when not to. We tell people at least at least come, be, come, come to class for a while. Get some understanding. Because this is a, you, you're entering into a covenant with the Lord. This is serious, brothers and sisters. But let's see, because he said, uh, believe and be baptized. Let's see who you have to believe on. Let's go to John, the third chapter. Go to John 3 and pick it up at 31. John 3 and 31. Jesus said to believe and be baptized. So it sound, sounds to me, and he that believed and baptized shall be saved. So it sounds seem like to me that baptism is necessary for salvation. And all this stuff, brothers and sisters, goes hand in hand. Even the Passover. Even the Passover. Is important. But uh, John 3, and we're going to pick it up, brother, at 31. 3 and 31. Go ahead, brother. He that cometh from above is, is, is above all. So he that cometh from above is above all. Jesus is the only one that's come from above. He's above all because the Lord, the Father, gave him a name above every name. Go ahead. He that is of the earth is earthy. And speaking of the earth. And all these people saying you don't have to be baptized. It's not necessary. All this stuff. The, the, the laws are nailed to the cross. That's because they're earthly. They, they're speaking earthly things. They think speaking things that they feel they understand. Go ahead. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he have seen and heard that he testified. And what he had seen and heard he testified of. Because he was in the presence of the Father. Go ahead. And no man receiveth his testimony. And no man receiveth his testimony. And that's the same thing going on right now today, brothers and sisters. People still rejecting Jesus. They're still rejecting the name of Jesus. For one whatever reason. Well, you know, and the biggest thing comes out of J. His name not Jesus. And if you call on the name Jesus, you call on the Lord's name in vain. Well, you say that's not his name. So how are you calling it in vain? All kinds of things. That's going on right now today. Go ahead, brother. 33. He that have received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. Go ahead. For he whom God have sent speaketh the words of God. 
For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So he whom God has sent, speaketh the word of God. The Father sent Jesus. And God did not give him the spirit by measure. There was no limitation on the knowledge and wisdom understanding that Jesus had. And brothers and sisters, Jesus' wisdom was continuous. And that's what we're supposed to do, brothers and sisters. That's how I was supposed to be. We're supposed to continue to grow in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. That's why we've come to, to, to class every Sabbath. That's why we read all the time, trying to grow in knowledge and wisdom. But he said, did I not give it to him by measure? Go ahead. The Father loveth the Son and have given all things unto his hand. And the Father loveth the Son and have given all things into his hand. He gave, we put all things in Jesus' hand. Jesus is the one that orchestrating this thing. Go ahead. He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. Also, he that believeth on the Son. So that's what you believe on? You believe on the Son. You believe on Jesus. So, but you kick it against him, that means you don't believe. That means you're not working toward everlasting life, but everlasting death. Go ahead. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Oh, but the wrath of God abided in him, on him. That, that, that is real serious, brothers and sisters. The wrath of God abided on you because you don't believe on the Son. And what the book says, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the true and living God. Yes, sir. There's no escaping this guy. You can't even, you can't even die and get away from, from, from the Lord. Big facts. You'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't transgress against the Lord. I don't get, I'm going to kill myself so he don't get me. Jump off the building, 10 story, hit the ground, get up, just be shorter. <laughs> the Lord don't let you die. Yeah, you know, I'm not through with you. But even if you die, he can wake you up and kill you forever. Ever. But let's go to Matthew 28 chapter. Let's see what Jesus told him, how Jesus told his disciples to baptize. But the baptism is, baptism is necessary to get everlasting life, but you have to believe. And there's something else you have to do also, 28 and 16. Matthew 28 and 16. Go ahead, brother. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Okay. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. You know, and this is again after the resurrection, and he said some doubted. That's why they say the doubting Thomas, because Thomas, he doubted. But go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Because the Father gave him all power. That's why the Father gave him his name. That's why he appointed him a name above all other names. Get all power. And if we're going to be heirs and join us with Christ, that means when we go through this, all power will be given to us. And we're going to be joined heirs with Christ. And how can you have all power if you're not God? But most people cannot comprehend this, brother and sister. Most people cannot comprehend this. But go ahead, brother. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. He said, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. And a lot of people... Get right here, and he, they stop. He say, teach all nations. And teach them what? All righteousness. Everything that the Lord say do in order to get eternal life, in order to get salvation. He's saying, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So that's what people usually baptize. That's who they baptize in. Then you try to explain to them, but Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, those are titles. Every man 
that has a child is a father. Every male is a son. Every angel that did not follow Satan a holy ghost, like they're holy angels, because they're in the presence of the Most High. So those are titles. Those are not names. If I was to say, hey, Father, everybody in here, every man in here, turn around and got a child. Because you're a father. But let's go see. That, let, and that, that, brothers, is why we have to righteous, rightfully search this book. Separate, divide. Here a little, there a little, line up on line, precept upon precept. To get full understanding. Let's go to Luke 24. Because if you didn't get baptized correctly, all you did, brother and sister, is got wet. That's okay. When you got into that pool, all you should have just gotten there with your glass of margarita and a floaty and just float around in there because you <laughs> got about the same accomplishment. Luke 24, we're going to pick it up at 36. 24 and 36. Go ahead, brother. And as they, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Okay, and then this is Luke, uh, a version of what happened. Go ahead. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. So they were terrified. They thought they had seen a spirit, but go ahead. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your heart? He said, why are you troubled? Why are you afraid? You know, these, these disciples, they were with Jesus through his three and a half years of ministry. Go ahead. Behold my hands, and my feet, that it is I myself. So Jesus told him, look at my hands, because he still had the holes in his hands. Look at my feet. He still had the holes in his feet. So that tells me that when Jesus rose, he rose with the same body. He said, well, you know, that old body, you're going to have a different body when you come back. No, you're going to have the same body. That's why David said, with my eyes, he didn't say with no eyes in the future, no spiritual eyes. He said, with my eyes will I see you. Uh, but go ahead. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bone as ye see me have. He said, but it's me. Look at you. It's me. I am. I am him. Go ahead. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Go ahead. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have ye here any meat? Go ahead. And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of honeycomb. And ahead. he took it and, he, and did eat before them. And go ahead. And he said unto them. Then what did he say? Go ahead. These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled. So Jesus said, these are things I told you all about this, that all things must be fulfilled. All prophecy, everything that was written about Jesus in, this, in, the, in the Old Testament had to be fulfilled. Go ahead. Which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. All these Old, Old Testament was, was written, it was concerning Jesus. Because this whole thing was about Jesus, about Jesus savaging his creation, savaging mankind. But go ahead. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So then he opened their understanding, showed them something, told them something so they can understand. And that's what we're in here doubt, brothers and sisters, every Sabbath, getting some understanding. Opening our understanding of this word of God. Go ahead. And said unto them, Thus it is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So Jesus is, is, and Christ did suffer. 
He did suffer. They put him through some stuff before, before he died. Because he had to suffer. He had to go through some stuff. All, with, with all stripes was he healed. He had to take that beating from, for us so that we can get eternal life. And he must rise from the dead the third day, which is what the world say is tomorrow. But it's before sunup. And, you know, uh, yesterday was their good Friday. Friday. The child asked me, uh, we're going to the baseball game, and this, this child, what is he at? He, he said, what's Friday? Holiday? Because he's out of school. I'm like, yeah, it's uh, well, it'll be Good Friday. Why do they call it Good Friday? I said, well, the world says it's Good Friday because it's the day that Jesus died. Well, what's so good about somebody dying? Facts. I said, you're right, son. I said, Bill, yeah, you're smart enough. He's about 12. I said, you start go home and try to get three days and three nights out of Good Friday to Easter Sunday morning. Now, don't count Sunday and see if you can get there. I started saying, now, go tell your mama. But then I said, well, you're only 12. You don't need to be homeless already. Yeah. But that's what Jesus said he was, he, he was raised the third day. Go ahead, brother. 47. And that repentance and remissions of sin, sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Oh, so repentance and, and remission of sin. So you have to, not only you have to believe, but you got to repent. And repentance just means being, being uh, remorseful, uh, remorseful about what you did and changing. So you got to change. He said, oh, you don't have to worry about it. Just come as you are. No, you cannot just come as you are. You have to change. Because you're telling the Lord, Lord, I'm entering into this cup, this new covenant with you, getting under your blood, and I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay there. Well, if you come out the same way you went in, what the purpose? That's why the Lord, it's like even during the Passover, you try to tell people that's how important that is when you take this Passover. Well, some people think, oh, I just go, I show up to class at Passover once a year. I'm good, at least for another year. No, you're not, because the Lord told Israel, when you get in that house, don't come from under that blood. Until that death angel passes over, don't come up till the morning. You come from under that blood. And that death angel ain't passed over yet. The end's not here. So you take that pass over and you step right back out there doing what you're doing. You just come from under that blood. You might not make it to the next pass over. No, the Lord said you don't know when your soul might be required of you. Teach, bro. But you got to repent and remission of sin. Ask for forgiveness for your sins. Go ahead. And ye are witnesses of these things. You're witness of these things. But he also say, preach and, and sin should be preached in his name, in Jesus' name. That's a reason why it's in Jesus' name. Go ahead. And behold, I send promises, promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be in, endowed with the power from upon high. But he said, but he said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Because Jesus wasn't ready for them. Although he said to all the world, there was a time for that. To all nations, there was a time for that. He told the disciples, tarry, stay in Jerusalem. He had to jumpstart Israel first. Give them some knowledge first. Before he sent them out there. There was a time, and when Paul came along, Paul was the one that went to the Gentiles, but that wasn't the time yet right then. But let's look at why you have to repent, brothers. Because some people say, you know, what I got to repent for? I haven't done nothing to repent for. I ain't done nothing. Get somebody that tell you that will tell you that, and I will show you a lie to your face. Anybody that told that will tell you they haven't done anything? Let's go to Isaiah 55. Anybody that will tell you they haven't done nothing? 
And, it, and, and, and brothers and sisters, it might sound funny, but these self-proclaimed saints, they would tell you that. I've been following the Lord all my life. I ain't never done nothing wrong. And I tell them, I say, you know what, sister, you know what, brother? Be careful what you say. All these cameras and social media, you might pop up on one of them anytime. <laughs> then you be talking about, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> there before I was saved. Okay, but you still did something. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55 and 6. 55 and 6. Go ahead, brother. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Say, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call upon him while he... Seek him while you can. Like I said about the, the pandemic, it's coming about the baptism. Your could, I mean, you know, should have been seeking the Lord well, when he could. Not. You know, because you never know when it might be too late. Go ahead, brother. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Lord is so merciful, he forgive you, he, he will pardon all of your sin. When you start believing this thing, repent and get baptized, you watch, the Lord forgive you of all your sins. You come out that water with a clean slate. A whole new world. You can't ask for no more. And that's just how merciful the Lord is. Go ahead, brother. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. The Lord said, my thoughts are not, the Lord, the Lord thoughts is not flesh. The Lord is not like, like we are. If the Lord say he's going to forgive you of all your sins, he's going to forgive you of all your sins. He's not going to bring it up in the past. Like, like, like we do. Yeah, I know you've made a mistake. I forgive you. But every chance they get, they like a stick. They beat you over the head with it. But I thought you forgave me for that. After these two licks, I might. But the Lord is not like that, brother. And we'll, I'm, I'm so grateful that he isn't like that. If he say, I forget pardon all your sins, he will. But go ahead, brother. Nine. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So his thoughts is higher than our thoughts, and his ways is higher than our ways. As the heaven is above the earth. And this, and this heaven, the heavens of heaven, I mean... But and sisters, we cannot comprehend. And he said heavens with an S. That means all the heavens, all the way up to the third heavens, is above the earth. That's how his ways and his thoughts is above ours. We, that's something we can't even comprehend. But let's look at it again, because first you got to believe, then you got to repent and be baptized, and the Lord will not remember or hold your past transgressions against you. Let's go to Ezekiel the 18. But brothers and sisters, but this works both ways. Ezekiel 18. This, 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 this salvation thing is serious, brothers and sisters. People take it lightly. And like Brother Boo said, these people come up. Even Brother Boo said, I was kind of surprised to hear him say that. But he, and I shouldn't have been. He said, but even in Chicago, they got this members that only comes on the feast, only comes on the Passover. He said, but what can we do? We can't turn them away. You know, and I'd be glad to see them brothers and sisters come here. And yeah, sometimes it gives me a little bit when they come walk up to me, right? Like, like they just saw me yesterday. 
<laughs> I ain't seen me since last pass old. Bro, man, oh, man, go see, man, what you doing, man? We got to catch, man. We gotta, I ain't seen you in a year. I ain't got that much time to be catching up. <laughs> but this thing is serious. 18, we're going to pick it up at 26. 18 and 26. Go ahead, brother. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commit of iniquity and dive in them, for his iniquity that he have done shall he die. So if he come from under that blood, if he was walking in his righteousness and then he turned away from it, just like the Lord will forgive you for all your wickedness, he ain't going to bring it up. All your righteousness, gone. You better hope, you better hope during that judgment that, that all that righteousness that you did do outweigh that wickedness. That's why there's a judgment, but you better hope so. But he said, you, all your wickedness, your sins, they will be held against you. Go ahead. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he have committed, endure that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul but, alive. But if the wicked start believing, repent, and be baptized, and continue to walk in this thing, he shall be saved. That's how merciful the Lord is. The Lord, that's why he say his thoughts and his ways is way above ours. And we are so thankful for that. But go ahead, brother. That was the end of that. Where'd you, where'd you stop at? 27? I'll stop at. Go ahead. Okay. 328. Because he considereth. And turns away from all his transgressions that he have committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. He says, surely live, he shall not die. Because he has considered what he was doing was wrong. And he turned away from that. He, re he repented from that. Just like the righteous man decided he was tired of being righteous, doing right, he's going to do wrong. And you get caught up in your wrongdoing, then you are in trouble with the Lord. Well, let's again, let's, let's go again and look at it. Let's go to the new book. Let's go to Romans, the third chapter. And again, see why everybody one has to repent. Romans 3 and 9. Romans 3 and 9. Go ahead, brother. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So ain't no one better, better than anybody else. No matter who you are, what nation you're with. That's why I don't see why people kick against the Gentiles. No, they can't be saved. Why, you, you know better than them. And we all, we all have sin. We are all under sin. That's why in Ecclesiastes 7 it says, there's not a just man upon the earth. There's not one that do it good. Because everybody has done something that they have to repent for. But go ahead, brother. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, not one, go ahead. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. So there's none that's righteous, not one. That means everybody has to ask for forgiveness or something. Go ahead. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Not one. Skip to 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. So that's why, that's why the law is there to, to expose sin. Let us know what sin is. And we all have done something. 
We all have done something. So ain't nobody justified in their own sight before God. Nobody can stand before God on their own merit. We all need to be under that blood. We all need to, to get that water baptism and try to walk in this thing as best we can. But let's go here because here's a, 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 a uh, we said that Jesus said baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So let's look at that. Let's go to Proverbs, 30, Proverbs the 30th chapter. Proverbs the 30th. You know, Solomon was wise. Man, but he had some guys around him. They had some little knowledge too. You know, if you're hanging around somebody long enough, you're going to start learning some stuff, too. These guys had some understanding. I always tell people, if, you just, if you're the only one in your group that's smart, you need a new group. <laughs> Proverbs 30 and 1. Go ahead, brother. The words of Agar, the son of Jekyll, even the prophecy the man spake unto Ithiel, even Ithiel and Ukiah. Go ahead. Surely I am more brutish than any man. He said, okay, surely I'm more basic than any man. I ain't got, I'm not no smart guy with not a knowledge. Go ahead. And I have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Go ahead. Who have ascended up into heaven? Who has ascended up to heaven? Now, we know who that is. Go ahead. Or descended. Go ahead. Who have gathered the wind in, in his fist, who have bowed the waters in the garment, who have established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? So this is the creation. This is the death, the resurrection, and also the creation. So he said, who has done all this? No, the Father commanded and Jesus did it by the hands of the angel, but he said, who has done all this? And better, better yet, what is his name? And what is his son's name? That means he has a name, and his son has a name. And it's not father and son. But that's a good question, brothers and sisters. That is a good question. Let's back, let's back up to Deuteronomy 32. And see if we can find us a name. People ask, why you all have, why y'all baptized in the name of Jesus? Because the Lord commanded us to. Plain and simple. Deuteronomy 32, we're going to pick it up at 3. We're going to read 3 and 4. Go ahead. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. So I will publish or proclaim the name of the Lord. He said, I will, I will, I will publish it. Go ahead. He is the rock. His work is perfect. He's the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. Go ahead. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. He's a God of truth, without iniquity, just and right is he. Now, I don't know any man that you could say that about. Not one, but he, he'd say we, he would pub publish the name of the Lord. And he is the rock. Let's go look at this rock. Let's look at it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians 10, we're going to pick it up at 1. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, I found out sometimes we have to go back to the basics. 
No, yeah, we but we move on and as we learn, we, we we get off that milk and get to that bread. But sometimes we that that meat, we get off that milk and get to that meat. But we still have to go back to the base. Cause we still have people in here, brothers. So you'd be surprised that don't fully understand the basic stuff. Cause we haven't addressed it in so long. You know, cause you know we 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 get in a posture where. Well, no, that's what we all know. That we need to move on. We need to get some of that meat. But we got to remember, we, we still be choking out other folks in here that's still on that milk. And that's another thing, brother. So it's a good thing for you to, to get in on those Wednesday night classes. Get some questions answered. You know, you don't always have to call me at 7 o'clock waking me up. I go to bed early. <laughs> When, I, when I'm, what I'm going to start doing, you call me at 7 o'clock waking me up, I'm going to call you when I get up at 3. Yes, sir. I got that answer to your question. <laughs> Who is this? Brother McKinley. <laughs> <laughs> but 1 Corinthians 10, I'm going to pick it up at 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to call. Don't call Boo. If Boo McKinley say he's going to call me. <laughs> Boo McKinley, did you say that? Yeah, Brother Boo, I did. But just don't call me. <laughs> yes, sir. First Corinthians 10 and 1. 10 and 1. Let's look at that rock. Go ahead, brother. Moreover, brethren, I would not have, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. How all our fathers, this time when, when the children of Israel were going, were going through the wilderness, the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And that, it, it was not by accident that the Lord took them through the Red Sea. That was not by accident. Like I said, this is not a God of just because. You know, you ask, and if you get in that first resurrection, you see him, ask him a question. He ain't going to say, I, ask him why he did something. I bet you his answer won't be uh, I don't know. <laughs> so you got some questions you really want to know the answer to? Keep doing this thing right so you can get into the kingdom. You can ask them no questions face to face. But you don't want to ask them why you're getting kicked in the lake of fire. You won't be able to sit there and talk with them. But he said, they all passed under the cloud and through the sea. Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. But read that too. And we were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They were all baptized. But who they baptized unto? Moses. They baptized unto Moses. But when, so when the children of Israel went through that Red Sea, the Lord was baptizing the whole nation. Well, you know, but the baptism wasn't published back then. That didn't come until the New Testament. But the baptism has always been on the table, brothers and sisters. The Lord baptized the whole world. We're going to show you that. But they were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Go ahead. Three. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? They all eat the same spiritual meat. They ate manna from heaven. They also ate this word, word of God. Lord gave them his laws, his statutes, and his commandments. Go ahead. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Oh, and they drank the same spiritual drink. They ate, the, they ate that spiritual meat and that spiritual drink. That when they were going through the also, then go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. So they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Never the Passover. They were still the Lord's body and his blood. He was still implementing the same thing. He still implementing the same thing. But he hadn't come and died in the flesh yet. But he was implementing the same thing. And that rock, and who was that rock? Who and, was that rock? Go ahead. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Because people, people think Christ is Jesus' last name. That's not his last name. He's Jesus the Christ. But this guy had a, 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 a question. He said, what is his name and what is his son's name? You can tell. 
What is his name and what is his son's name, as he could tell. But this rock, brothers and sisters, that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. But let's go to Exodus, the sixth chapter. So that rock that Moses and the children of Israel were dealing with in the uh, wilderness. That was Christ. Exodus 6 and 2. Exodus 6 and 2. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and get us a name. And we know that rock was Christ. Let's see who Christ was in this old book dealing with, with Moses. Go ahead, brother. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. He said, I am the Lord. So this is God speaking. See, people would want to tell you that the God of the old book, the God of this old book, that was the Father. Now, Jesus didn't come along until the New Testament. But Jesus said himself that the Old Testament, all the scriptures, you search the scriptures, you think you have some understanding, you search the scriptures, but they're written of him. He said, they're written of me. And wasn't no New Testament then. He was living the New Testament. Only thing on the table was the Old Testament. Go ahead, brother. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob oh. by the name of God Almighty. So I appeared unto Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob as the God Almighty. You know, in, in, in the Old Testament, when the Lord would appear unto them, he would appear as the God Almighty. I am that I am. He would let you know then. That name he had then, that wasn't, a, that wasn't important. He knew he was going to do, he, he was going to share that name. He didn't even tell Moses. He had to tell Moses. Moses kept asking, who would I tell him sent me? Just tell him, I am sent you. You know, you got some group, Hebrew groups that proclaim that that is his name, I am. But in Hebrew, it's a higher. Don't that sound better? I say, some things in French sound better. No. I get to go to the latrine. Mm -hmm. That I got to go to the, to, to the, to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, wee wee. But that don't make it no, <laughs> that don't make it no better. <laughs> I say, I can say I am. That don't mean that's my name. But he wasn't hung up, hung up on name, hung up on name. But he said, I appeared before unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and Jacob by the name God Almighty. But go ahead. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Oh, so, so and he's and he talking to Moses now. That same rock that was Christ. He said, by my name Jehovah, I was not known unto them. So Christ, Jesus the Son, his name was Jehovah. His name was Jehovah. Go ahead. And I have also established my covenant with them. And he's the one that established the covenant. The circumcision. Everything. He'd want to establish his covenant with them. Go ahead. To give them the land of Canaan. He'd want to give Israel the land of Canaan. Go ahead. The land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. Land of their pil a pilgrimage. Or they traveled into land where they were strangers, to lands that they knew not, that their fathers knew not. It was Jehovah or Jesus the Christ that did this. So his name was Jehovah then. But when he came into the flesh, he did not come in that name. He did not come in the name Jehovah. When that angel came to Mary and told Mary she was going to have a child, that's why that angel had to tell Mary what to name that, that child. He had to have a specific name. And it was not Jehovah. But let's go to Isaiah, the 12th chapter. Isaiah 12. And see, 
this, uh, this, this Jehovah, what happened to Jehovah? Isaiah 12. Isaiah 12 and 2. Go ahead, brother. Behold, God is my salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. We know who's our salvation. We know who, who saved us from our sins. Go ahead. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He said, the, the, the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Told the Lord Jehovah. And what else? Go ahead. He also is become my salvation. Also, Jehovah has become my salvation. He wasn't at first. He become my thing. When he do that, when he took on the name of Jesus and died for our sin. So, so that son name was Jehovah. But let's go to uh, John, St. John, the fifth chapter. St. John 5. Like I say, brothers and sisters, it's a simple lesson, but sometimes we got to get back to the basics. Get back to the basics sometimes. Get our feet back planted and solid. St. John 5, I'm going to pick it up at 30. I know some of you sisters that cook. Y'all know how it is. Y'all been cooking something so long, then you've been mess messing with the recipe. Then you get to a point, I try this, I try something different. You hear them say, ooh, that's right, but why don't, you, why don't you go back to the way you used to do it? <laughs> and start over again. You don't like that, brothers? Don't answer that. <laughs> Just say, it's all right. <laughs> you had already perfected it. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to keep a happy home. Like I say, my wife, we've been married there 30 years. I never want to argue. <laughs> but I never miss a night of sleep. Yes, sir. John 5 and 30. Go ahead, brother. I can't, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He said, I, I do the will of the Father that sent me. So even Jesus came, he was when he came in the flesh, he had to do what the Father sent him to do. He had to do things according to the way it had to be done, according to prophecy. Go ahead. Skip to 36. Skip to 30. Down 36. Yes, sir. But I have greater witnesses than that of John for the works which the Father have given me to finish the same works that I do. Bear witness of me that the Father have sent me. So John, so, so Lord, I have a better witness than that of John, but go ahead. And the Father himself, which has sent me, have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Never want to read that, because people say the God of the Old Testament is the Father, but you have never heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So you know they couldn't have been dealing with him in the Old Testament. But go ahead, 38. And ye have not his words abiding in you, for whom he have sent him ye believe not. But you do not have, but that's a powerful statement. You have not his word abiding in you, for whom he sent him ye, not, you, ye believe not. You kick against Jesus. We got all these groups out here, they kick against Jesus. Then they won't come battle us with the word. Jesus just said, you have not his word in you. Then they wonder, every time I go, they, they kick my butt. Why? <laughs> he 
You know, but that is why you don't believe on him who he said. So his word is not in you. But go ahead, brother. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So if you kick against Jesus, how, how, how are you teaching eternal life? How are you teaching anybody how to get salvation? So what are you teaching? That's why I follow some of these other, they got all kinds of other stuff. Hebrew classes, they teach you how to speak Hebrew. They teach you, teach you how to make fire with two sticks. I don't need you to teach me that in church. <laughs> I got a new invention it's called a lighter. But they wonder why they lose every time. Every time. Skip to, uh, uh, uh. what's that, 43? Yes, sir. Skip to 43. I am come in my Father's name. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. He said, I didn't come in my name. I come in my Father's name. Go ahead. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. He came in my That's why he wasn't pushing that name Jehovah. And he knew when he was coming, he was coming in another name. He said, I come in my Father's name. And if he come in the name of Jesus, and he come in his father's name, common sense should tell you that the father's name must be Jesus. He must be named after his father. Same. You know? So he, that's right. He must be Jesus Jr. But he said, but if another come in his name, oh, yeah, you'd be ready to accept him. If John the Baptist came in his name, oh, they accepted him. But he come in his father's name, so they kick against him. But let's go further. Let's go to uh, John the 14th chapter. John 14 and 14. So Jesus, he didn't come in the name of Jehovah. He came in the name of the Father, which is Jesus. Let's see what the Holy Ghost. So he said, I baptize your name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let's see what name the Holy Ghost you're going to come in. Cause like, we, like we all know, brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is just an angel, one of the angels that did not follow Satan. They were the ones that were smart enough to stay with Team Jesus. You know, they weren't, they weren't like those those demons that follow Satan out there chasing a ring, they, already, they, they didn't know they was already on the championship team. But Satan sold them a bill of goods. Well, come on, ride with me. Say, I can hear them. Come on, ride with me. Well, we're going to make this thing. We're going to have this thing popping. They're going to be popping all right. In the late. John 14 and 14. Go ahead, brother. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You should ask anything in my name. But if you kick against his name, if you kick against the name of Jesus, and Jesus got the Father name, so you kicking against both the Father and Jesus. His son, so if you, if you don't believe on his name, why would you ask for anything and expect it to get done? But go ahead. If you love me, keep my commandments. But if you love me, keep my commandments. See, the Lord threw, them, threw that in there. Don't, don't, don't forget that. If you love me, keep my commandments. Go ahead. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And I pray to Father, he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Because when Jesus was here in the flesh, there was no need for that holy angel to be there. Jesus was here. But when he went back to heaven, he sent that Holy Ghost back. Get back on your job. But he said, you prayed for, I was sinning. 
and he will abide with you forever. Go ahead. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. And it's the reason why the world cannot see him. They, don't, they can't believe on him. Go ahead. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. But you know him because you believe. You believe on Jesus. And if Jesus sent in him, if you don't believe in Jesus, then you're not going to believe Jesus sent in him. But we, we believe. But skip to uh, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Oh, so that Comforter, that Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost or that Holy Spirit, which the Father will send in my name, and what is his name? Jesus. That will come. So that Holy Ghost comes in the name of Jesus. He don't come in his own name. And when those angels come and they talk, that's why they talk in first person. They talking as if the Lord was standing right there. And they don't want to deviate. They don't deviate one, one way or the other. If Jesus said, go tell them I said such and such. They go, I said such and such. They don't even change. They don't even say Jesus said. Or the Lord said. <laughs> but the way the Lord said to them, that's exactly the way they bring it. Exactly. Well, go ahead, brother. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. He said, and he shall teach you all things. So, when, so, so brother and sisters, when you're reading and you're studying and you're praying, the Lord give you some enlightenment. He'll, you'll be surprised. He'll open up your eyes. You, oh, man, that's what that means? That, that, that is something. I never saw that before. But what if you haven't been reading, studying? What he, you have nothing for him to bring to remembrance? Oh, you're up in here asleep. <laughs> and you're reading. The only thing can remember. Man, I was at class. I was dreaming about so-and-so, so-and-so. That's all he got to bring to remembrance. That's why we tell everybody, it's good to come to class, brother, but read, study. It's better to study and read on your own. You get, you get some great understanding, great understanding. But that Holy Ghost comes in the name also. He comes in the name of Jesus. So the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they all coming in the same name. The Father's name was Jesus. The Father gave the Son his name, so his name is Jesus. And when he sent that Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost coming in Jesus' name. So if you baptize in the name of Jesus, you got everything covered. You got it covered. Well, let's go look for Let's go to Isaiah 45. And see, why this name of Jesus is the name you have to... So and if you're one of these holiness church, and you should, and you say you feel with the Holy Ghost, you should have some understanding. You shouldn't be up at sunrise tomorrow morning, <laughs> waiting on the sun to rise. You should have some understanding. When I get up in tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm not going to turn the TV on because I don't want to see some of y'all out there with them Easter egg hunts and, and catch y'all on TV. Just, just, just joking, brother and sister. I know you all are going out there. High as eggs are, you can't afford it, something to shoot. <laughs> they all plastic now, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, they can't, can't play. Oh, I, yeah. I know it's Easter. It is too hot. Yeah. Messed up the potato salad. <laughs> they can have some Easter potato hunt. <laughs> but you, you should have some understanding, brothers and sisters. You should, you know, 
know what's going on. If you're full of your holiness and you're with the holiness church and the Holy Ghost and you fill out the Holy Ghost, if you don't have enough understanding what you're full of. Y'all know what that is. <laughs> Isaiah 45 and 18. Go ahead, brother. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He had established it. He, he, he created it not in vain. But the Lord didn't create this earth. This creation was not done in vain. He, it was for a purpose. Go ahead. He formed it to be inhabited. He created this earth to be inhabited, and not just for a period of time. That's why death was not on the table in the beginning. This earth was, was created to be inhabited forever. Go ahead. I am the Lord, and there is none else. He said, I am the Lord, and there is none else, because there is no other God greater. Because the Father and the Son in the beginning, they were the same. They were just God. But go ahead, brother. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He didn't, he didn't tell Jacob, seek me in vain. No, you seek me for a purpose. Go ahead. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. The Lord said, he speaks he speak righteousness. He don't speak foolishness. Go ahead. Skip to uh, uh, 22. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. And this is the Old Testament, so we know who this is. This is Jehovah who became the salvation. But he said, look up unto me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. Everybody, go ahead. I have sworn by myself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness. He said, I sworn by myself. Why he swore by himself? Because there's no other name greater. Go ahead. And shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Okay, so unto, so unto him every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear or confess. That's why you got to get baptized in the name of Jesus. But let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. But this guy said he can do all that. Look like this guy, you'd be running to obey and be obedient to. Philippians 2 and 5. My brothers and sisters, people tell you how much they love the Lord and, and, and they would do anything the Lord say and I and I believe them until a point, but I bet if the Lord come right to them right now and say, I'm the Lord, oh, I bet they'll fall on their knees. Oh, Lord, I love you, Lord. I'm your servant. I'll do whatever you want me to do. If, if he say, okay, stop eating that pork chop. But wait a minute, Lord. Let me make sure it's you. <laughs> Don't ask for his ID. <laughs> yeah, see, they, they, oh, they ready and long. As long as they don't have to give up nothing. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of imposters out here, Lord. Let me see your hands. <laughs> Even after that, they still. But wait a minute, Lord, why, why does bacon taste so good if mm -hmm. I got to give? Why you make it taste so good? Biggest thing out here, I tell people, I didn't read nowhere in the Bible where it said, don't eat this because it don't taste good. <laughs> that is not in the dietary law. But uh, Philippians 2 and pick it up at 5. 2 and 5. Go ahead, brother. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Christ had an obedient mind. He had a spiritual mind. Hold my head. His mind was focused on doing it. Even when he was 12 years old, you know, I got to be by my, my father's business. He was about his business. That's how we got to be, brothers. Since we call ourselves servants of the Lord, the most high God, we got to be about our father's business. 
And just like Jesus and them, the, those disciples, the best way to be about that business, they're about working together. That, they work together. One no schisms, one no division, one no contention. They were about their business, and if, and if we stay focused on the Lord's business, we won't have time for that. The second Corinthians, I mean, uh, Philippians 2 and 5. Keep going, brother. Six, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And he could do that. But he didn't think it, he was equal with the Father in the beginning. And he was and then he equal with the Father again after his resurrection. So he didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God. But we can't say that because we're in the flesh and we have all done something wrong. That's why when people talk about they, they the Christ, they God, and I be just looking at it and, and what really puzzles me, they have followers. Like, what did this person do to convince you he was God? I mean, what did he do? Like I always say, like that David Koresh, man, I thought he God had a house full of people. And when he get ready to read, he had to put his glasses on. You God, but you can't fix your eyes. That's the first miracle I want to see you do. <laughs> And you couldn't stop them FBI agents from coming in there. <laughs> what are them angels? How come you didn't call on that legion of angels? Well, Jesus is the only one who, who could say that. Go ahead, brother. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men. So he didn't make himself no reputation. He didn't come in his own name. He didn't boast about himself. Everything he did, he gave glory to the Father. He edified the Father. He did not boast of himself. He didn't come down to make no reputation for himself. But he came in the form of a servant. And that's what we are, brothers. We are servants. Servants of the Lord God. And he came in the likeness of man. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Now, that's some humility. He humbled himself. He created, the, he, he created man, then he allowed man to kill him so he could save man. And that's some humility. I mean, that, that's some powerful love right there, brothers and sisters. For him to do that for us, You know, some of us won't even take a bee sting for the other. Here come a waltz. Ooh, they first one out of there. Lock the door on you, too. <laughs> Look through the window. Did you get them? <laughs> they did me like that one time at the <laughs> office. Run out the office. Then close the door. There's a waltz in there. Did you get them? I might want to run out, too. <laughs> but Jesus, that, 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 was some, that was some powerful love. Go ahead, brother. Nine, wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So exalt him and give him a name above every name. But he couldn't give him a name above his, him, his own name because he's God. He's the most high. There was nothing above him. So the highest name he can give Jesus was his name. Was his name. Go ahead. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. And of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So at the name of Jesus, every knee, that's why we got to get baptized in the name of Jesus. That name is above every name. You can't get no higher than that. And under that name, everything in heaven, in earth, under the, under the earth, whatever, whatever, Going to give uh, uh, honor to this name. Go ahead. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And every, every tongue should confess and not kick against it. 
Because Jesus said, if you believe not, then you will not be saved. So at some point, those people that are kicking, they're going to have to confess. At some point, they're going to have to confess that Jesus, Jesus is the one. So in over in Isaiah, that, that's who they were talking about, Jesus the son, Jesus Jr. And people are going to rag on this guy, and this is the only guy you can get salvation through. I tell people all the time, it's okay to be stupid. But don't be stuck and don't be stuck on stupid. At some point, get some traction so you can get off that part. But let's go to Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians 1 and 15. Ephesians 1 and 15. Ephesians 1 and 15. Go ahead, brother, when you get it. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. So Paul was saying, uh, also, after I heard of your faith and your love to all the saints. Go ahead. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul said, I cease not to give thanks, not thanks for you and mention, and I always mention you in my prayer. Go ahead. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And that's what we teach and try to, and we pray for that, that we get the knowledge of God and the wisdom and some understanding. So we'll know and make sure we're doing what we are supposed to be doing. And until that time goes on, when we learn better, when the Lord gives us more understanding, we make adjustments. Go ahead, brother. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And a lot of people, brother, they don't even know what the inheritance is, what the saints' inheritance is. They think it is to become angels, get some wings and fly around or be, or be whisked off, raptured off to heaven. They'll say, yeah, I'm going to be an angel. I'm going to be wrapped out of heaven. I'm going to be an angel. Well, you become an angel. Can't you fly to heaven? And you're going to be up there by yourself looking for everybody. But go ahead. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to, to, to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? The working of his mighty power. Go ahead. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So for Jesus, the only one that's on the right hand of the Father. But go ahead. For far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. And every name that is named. So every name that is named. So that's why the name of Jesus is so powerful. That's why the Father gave him his name. It is above all principalities, power, might, dominion, and every name. Everything you have to bow to him. Even, even Satan and, the, and his minions. Even the demons. The Lord, all of them have to bow to him. Go ahead. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. But not only in this world, also in the world to come. So not only in this world, that's, how, that's just how powerful, powerful this word of God, this, 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 this uh, uh, name of Jesus is. That's why you have to get baptized in it, and not just the title. But let's see it again. Let's go to Acts, the fourth chapter. That's why everything is done in the name of Jesus. Acts 4 and 10. Acts 4 and 10. Four and ten. Ten and twelve. Ten through twelve. Acts 4, 10 through 12. Go ahead, brother. Be it known unto you all and unto all the people of Israel 
that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him do, do this man stand here before you hold. And this is Peter. He started railing on the people because they, they killed Jesus, but go ahead. This is the stone which was set at naught of you, of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. He said, this is the, this is the stone that you are rejected. Now he become the head of the corner. And when you, if you, you're an uh, uh, engineer of country, you know the head of the, 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 head of, the, 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 uh, uh, of the corner, that, that stone, that's, the found, that, that's that solid, that, that foundation. That's what it, it's based on, that holds it up, hold, holds the structure up. But go ahead. Twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other. Oh, neither is there salvation in any other. Then we say, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. He said, there is no salvation, no salvation in any other name. Go ahead. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. He said, whereby we must be saved. Whereby we must be saved. There's no other name. So that's just how powerful that name of Jesus is. That baptism is important for them. So you got, to, you got to repent, you got to believe, and you got to be baptized, but you got to be baptized right. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. You have to. There's no other way around it. Let's go to Acts the 20th chapter. See who else got baptized. Acts 20, we're going to pick it up at Acts 20 and 28. Go ahead, brother. Say ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So Jesus purchased the church with his own blood. When he came and died for us, he purchased with his own blood. Go ahead. For I know this. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in, enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And it is. It's some grieving, grievous wolves, hungry wolves. They, don't, they have no mercy for the congregation. All they care about is money. Go ahead. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And then what they do, they come, they talk and Smooth talk, try to draw you away, telling you you don't have to be baptized. You don't have to keep the law. And it is Israel indoctrinating everybody with this falsehood and these lies. And they're not speaking against the things that they should be speaking against. But let's go to uh, uh, 1 John, the third chapter. 1 John 3, and we're going to pick it up at 16. Then we're going to skip to 22. 1 John 3 and 16. Go ahead, brother. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And that's right, brothers and sisters. The Lord gave love us, so he laid his life down for us. And we should be willing to do the same for our brethren. Try to uplift them when they're down. And like I said earlier, like D. Bear and, and Jeremy should have went baptized that, that COVID boy in the hospital. Well, skip to uh, uh, 22. And whatsoever we speak, I mean, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments. Also, whatever we ask, we receive because we keep his command. We do what he say do. We don't kick against it. Go ahead. 
and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Which is obeying his word, his statutes, his laws, and his commandments. Go ahead. And this is his commandment. And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. We shall believe on his, the name of his son, Jesus Christ. So if you're kicking against that name, Jesus, if you're kicking against it, then you're not doing things that is pleasing in his sight. And you're not keeping his commandments. Go ahead. And love one another as he gave us commandment. And love one another. And that is the key. Charity, that charity, that's the key. Love one another. Go ahead, brother. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. And that spirit is this word. And we keep his commandments, he dwelleth in us. So we are, we are doing things that is pleasing to him. That is pleasing to him. But like I said earlier, brothers and sisters, let's go to Matthew 26 chapter because the Lord didn't just die. He suffered. He went through some stuff. And he did it for ungrateful people. Matthew 26. The Lord died to save the very same people that was killing him. Matthew 26 and 61. Go ahead, brother. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. So they trying to, uh, they brought some false witnesses in to try to find something to accuse Jesus for. But go ahead. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus didn't respond. He kept his cool. So the high priest wanted him to say something. But go ahead. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. He gonna, I'm, I adjure you by the living God. You don't even believe. Well, you know, they always want to... Wanna, wanna, Throw that religious card on you. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And they had no understanding what Jesus was talking about because they, because they didn't believe on him. So that word was not in them. But go ahead. Then the high priest rent his clothing, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. So he automatically, he automatically uh, thought Jesus was blaspheming. Because he didn't understand. He had no understanding. Go ahead. What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. And they said, he's guilty of death. They wanted to kill him. Go ahead. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the, with the palms of their hands. They, 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 they spit in his face. They hit him. They slapped him. And what else they say? Go ahead. Saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Then they mocked him. Prophesy to us. Who's, who, who slapped you? If you the Christ. So he, Jesus went through some stuff. Let's go on to Matthew 27 and 20. Because he went... He, he had to suffer for our sin. That's just how bad off we were. Matthew 27 and 20. Go ahead, brother. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So this was, and then, uh, 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 now Pilate was trying to, say, he, he didn't want to crucify Jesus. He was afraid. But the, but the chief priest persuaded the mother too. no, let's ask for Barabbas, this murderer. This, I mean, and Jesus hadn't done anything. But they want him out the way. Go ahead. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that 
will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Go ahead. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. So Pilate said, Well, what shall I do with you? He, he still gave them a chance to say, Release Jesus also. They said, No, let him be crucified. Go ahead. And the governor said, Why? What evil have he done? He said, Why? What, evil? what has this man done? He knew that Jesus was innocent. Go ahead. But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. So they started an uproar. Let him be crucified. Go ahead, brother. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. So Pilate said, after he saw that the people were getting riled up, he washed his hands and said, look, I don't want nothing to do with the blood of this innocent. And he said, the, this, this, I am innocent of, this, of the blood of this just person. He knew that he hadn't done anything. He said, you all want to kill him? You all do it. Y'all take care of it. Then go ahead. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and our children. His blood be on us and our children. I always say, why the heck they had to put us in there? Yes, sir. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they open their mouth. So during come judgment day, I'm gonna tell Lord, Lord, I wanna f let me let me put them in the lake of fire. <laughs> Him that send them before me. We mind our own business and they putting us in it. We weren't even here yet. <laughs> let's go to Hebrews, the first chapter. Because after he went through all this, let's see what happened. Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews 1 and 1. Go ahead, brother. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So God, God in, in, in many times and many ways, many manners, he spake in times and past unto the fathers by the prophets. Go ahead. Have in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He sent Jesus. Go ahead. Whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. He appointed heir of all things, who by also he made the world. Jesus made the world. Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. But they were the same. They were both gods. Go ahead. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, Sit down on the right hand of majesty on high. He by himself, when he went through all of that, being slapped, being spit on, being beaten, thorns put on his head, had to drag that cross, nailed to the cross, he purged us of our sins. Go ahead. Being made so much better than the angels, as he have inheritance obtained a more excellent name, than they. But he was made much better after he died, because he came in the flesh. You know, when he was made, when he came in the flesh, he was made a little lower than angels. But then when he rose, he was more than the angels, better than the angels. And he obtained a more excellent name than they. He obtained the name of the Father, which is the name of Jesus. He went through all that so that he could save us. But let's go to 1 Peter, the third chapter. 1 Peter 3 and 18. They show that everybody has to get the baptism. First Peter 3 and 18. Three and eighteen. Go ahead, babe. Uh, 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 brother. <laughs> for Christ also have once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, 
but quickened by the Spirit. But Christ also once suffered for sin. He did it once, that he might save the that he might be the save the just. He, he, Christ suffered for our sins. Him being just saved us who are unjust. That he might bring us to God. So he came in the flesh and he died, but when he was quickened, which was brought alive, he was brought alive in the spirit. So when he went down in that ground, that's what that baptism represents, brothers and sisters. When you go down in that water, that's why your whole body goes in that water. It's like you're being buried and you come up a new person. That's, that's what we're supposed to come up, a new person. Like when Christ came up, he went down there flesh, he rose spirit. It's like a seed. When you, when you, when you plant a seed, that seed dies, and then something grows. But when you plant a seed, something different come up. A big seed don't come up. A plant come up. And that, that's how Jesus that, that's that's uh, how Jesus did for us. He died and he rose spirit. But go ahead, brother. 19. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. He went and speech unto the spirits, uh, 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 spirits in prison. Everybody said, well, see, there were some spirits out there. He, he went to and speech to the dead. No, he didn't. Those, those, ain't Satan, when the Lord destroyed this world with that flood, they were hawking at the bit to get at this new world. Jesus had to tell them, hey, look, your time is coming. It's time is not now. It's not the end. It's not the end. It's not time for you all to, to do what you all do. But go ahead. We sometimes were disobedient. When, one, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being uh, preparing were in few. That is, eight souls were saved by water. So eight souls were saved by water. So the Lord baptized the whole world. He killed all the unrighteous and only saved the righteous. It was Noah and his, his family. He baptized the whole world during that flood. But go ahead. The light figure run to even baptism doeth also now save us. So just like the water, the baptism saves us. That water baptism saves us. Like I say, we go down as a flesh, we're supposed to come up a new person. A whole new person. Go ahead. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of, of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when you go down in that water, you come up that new person, but you you come up a new spiritual person. You probably have a change of heart, a, a change of mind, change of attitude. And when you go in that water, and when, when we dipped you in that water, and you come up, physically, you're the same person. If you go down that water with a big head, don't think you're coming up with a small head. Well, that's my flaw. I'm going to go in that bathtub and I'm going to come up. My head's going to be small. You're going to have the same big old head. If you got one foot bigger than the other, you're going to still have them same. But you, spiritually, you're supposed to be different. Spiritually. You're supposed to walk in the newness of life. You're supposed to be living different. That's what it's all about. But let's go to Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew's three and one. Matthews 3 and 1. Matthews 3 and 1. Go ahead, brother. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. In uh, those days came John the Baptist, and he would call John the Baptist because that's what he did. He baptized. So they called him John the Baptist. And that's how they did. Just like uh, 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 Mike the mechanic, Peter the plumber, Ned the wino, Willie the wino, whatever. It was just a title. John the Baptist because he baptized. But go ahead, brother. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
But what he meant that a representative from the kingdom, Jesus was here. He knew that. So he's telling people, hey, you better repent. Better get your life together. The time is, time is getting close. Skip the five, brother. Then went out to him, then went out to him, Jer Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordan. So everybody was coming to him, but somebody else came too. But go ahead. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. That is all we're pitting, getting baptized. But they've been baptized unto John. Go ahead. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. <laughs> he saw all the Sadducees, all the, the, the uh, religious priests, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, all these religious people. Both of them, they come and he say, hey, who told you all, generation of vipers? Because, you know, they, they didn't believe. They didn't believe on Jesus. But skip to, uh, uh, skip to 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Oh, so even Jesus came to get baptized? Even Jesus had to get baptized? That's right, brother and sister. He was in the flesh. He said he had to fulfill all righteousness. He had to do everything, everything he commanded everybody else to do. But John the Baptist was kicking this thing off because the baptism was, wasn't widely, it wasn't before the end. But Jesus had to do the same thing everybody else had to do. Go ahead, brother. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? But John knew who he was. He said, hey, I need, you need to baptize me. I need to be baptized of you. And you come to me, and what did Jesus say? Go ahead. And Jesus answering and said unto him, suffer it, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. He said, for fulfill all righteousness. What all righteousness? Everything. Commandments. Feast days. The dietary law. Everything. The baptism. The, everything. He said, if we have, after this becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. All righteousness. Because he had to, because he was in the flesh. But go ahead, brother. Where are we? At the end of 15. The end of 15. Go ahead. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that's the, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. But Jesus, and that's when he was anointed, when he came out that baptism. And that dove set on him. So he ready to start his ministry. That's when he was that, that's when his, that, uh, 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 that when he was anointed. But Jesus, even Jesus had to be baptized, brother and sister. So if Jesus got baptized, we know we have to do it. But John was baptized in just to repentance. But let's go to Luke, the first chapter. Luke 1 and 39. Luke 1 and 39. Luke 1 and 39. This is John the Baptist when he was born. Go ahead, brother. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. This is Mary, and she went to uh, uh, John the Baptist's parents. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. So even when John the Baptist was in his mother's womb, he knew he knew what was going on. He knew what was going on. But skip to 57. Now Elizabeth four time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and, and they rejoiced with her. And they rejoiced with her. Go ahead. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to, excuse me, the circum, the circum, the, circum, the circumcised child, and they called 
him Zacharias after the name of his father. So after the eight days, so you, this is the New Testament, so they were still keeping the laws of Moses, the commandments that the Lord gave Israel in the wilderness on the eighth day, circumcised the child. They were still keeping their old laws. They, that, that's why Jesus said, fulfill all, all righteousness. All righteousness. But go ahead, brother. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. But his mother said, no, he shall be called John. Because the angels told her what to call him. So, so then when Jesus said, fulfill all righteousness, he meant everything that he had commanded us to do from the beginning we had to do. But let's go uh, uh, Ezekiel 44, because people say, well, you know, you got to be circumcised in the heart and in the mind that, that physical things don't count. Yeah, you do have to be circumcised in the heart or the mind. But all you're doing is just cutting off that flesh the lust of the flesh. Getting that out your head. Ezekiel 44 and 7. 44 and 7. See, everybody that's coming into this thing has to do everything according to what thus said the Lord. Ezekiel 44 and 7. Go ahead, brother. In that ye have brought unto, unto my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, and uncircumcised in flesh. Oh, so those are uncircumcised in heart and in flesh. Go ahead. To be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house. When you offer my bread, the fat, and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. He said, you brought these strangers in my, in my sanctuary, uncircumcised in heart and in flesh. Go ahead. And ye have not kept the charge of my holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart or uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So in one law for Israel and one for the stranger. So you have to, so when people say, I just read that, when people say you go, you don't have to be circumcised as long as you're circumcised in your heart. No, you have to be. That's, that's part of the commandments the Lord gave us also. His statutes, be circumcised in the flesh. That's a covenant he made. But let's, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. And we just got, never mind. Galatians 3. We still got a few more, so I better wait here. We chop them down a little bit more. Galatians 3 and 26. 26 through 29. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. Go ahead, brother, when you get it. For ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For so children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So many of you have baptized unto Christ, into Christ, has put on Christ. You told the Lord, I'm God, I want to come get under the blood, under the new covenant. I want to do this thing right. I want to repent because I believe and I want them to get under the blood. Go ahead. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And that's something, that seems like it covers everybody. Male, female, Jew, Greek, whatever nation you, you're with. So it looks like we all one in Christ. It's like we all got a chance to this thing. Go ahead, brother. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. Oh, and then if you be Christ... Then you Abraham see, and what else? Go ahead. And heirs according to the promise. Oh, and you have access to the promise. So if you're Gentile, because the Greeks are the Gentiles, you Israel, if you're free, if you bond, if you're male or female, we all have. If you if you baptize unto Christ, you got access to the promise. You got access to eternal life, no matter who you are. 
but people want to kick against it. But everybody has to get that baptism. That's just how important it is. Let's go back up to Acts 22. Look at one more baptism for somebody else who got baptism. Acts 22 and 6. Acts 22 and 6. Acts 22 and 6. And go ahead, brother. Let's read through this. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come now unto Damascus about noon, some there shone forth heaven a great light around about me. And this is Paul uh, giving a testimony about what happened to him. Go ahead. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why, why persecutest thou me? So Jesus called Paul by his real name because he was from the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead. And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Now, and Paul got a break here. Because the Lord could have waited until Judgment Day and asked him this question. You know. Well, he got a break. Go ahead. And, and they that were with, with, with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. So the people that were with him, they, they, they saw the light, but they didn't hear who Paul was talking to. Go ahead. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus. And there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. So go ahead. And when I could not see for the glory of, the, of that light, being led by hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. So the Paul said that light was so bright it blinded him. Go ahead. And when Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews would dwell there. But the Lord told him if he had to go to a, 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 a Israelite, to get some instructions, go ahead. Came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. So, he, so Paul was able to see again, but go ahead. And he said, The God of our fathers have chosen thee, that thou shouldest know, this, know his will, and see that just one shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. And go ahead. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. He's saying, you're going to be a witness to all men what you have seen and heard. And what else? Go ahead. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So he told, so even Paul, before he could get started with his ministry uh, for the Lord and go over to the Gentiles, he had to be baptized. So everybody had to get baptized. Jesus had to get baptized. Paul, everybody's favorite apostle, even he had to be baptized. But let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. We just got three more after this, brother and sister. Romans 6 and 1. Romans 6 and 1. Six and one. Go ahead, brother. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So, so, all, so all Paul said, once we come into this truth, into this, to this thing, and we stop sinning, why should we go back to doing that same old stuff? Go ahead. Know ye not that so many of us all were baptized unto Jesus, were baptized unto his death. And that, that baptized symbolizes going into that ground like Jesus, putting, taking off this old flesh suit and putting on that spiritual suit. But taking off that old flesh for thinking and putting on that spiritual thinking, putting on that mind of Christ. Go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Just like when Christ rose up, he, he, he made that physical change. He was spirit now. He was God. When we walk up, we're supposed to walk in newness of life. We're supposed to be different. Not physically, but spiritually, mentally, our thoughts, our, the, way we, the way we think, the way we act. People be different. We don't supposed to be that same old sinful person. 
that lustful person that we were before. Go ahead. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And we do it, on, we, we take that baptism so that when the time does come, when the end time come, we will be in that great resurrection. We also would be risen with Christ on the right side of the kingdom. But go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And then when we go in that water, that old man is crucified. We drown in that old man. No matter who you are, what you have done. I know sometimes you feel like we got to put some chain in that, in, in that uh, uh, baptism pool to keep that old lust for man down there. And he tried to come up. You walk out there, he tried to grab your leg. You got to kick him off of you. But don't mind, leave him in there. Leave him in there. He should not come up with you. But uh, skip to 18, brother. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. And when you come out there, now you are the servant of righteousness. You're no longer the servant of sin. You are the servant of righteousness. Let's go to Jude, one little book right before Revelation. We're going to start at 20. Jude 20. But once you enter under that covenant and God recognizes you, this is what he do. Jude, 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 side at 20. Go ahead, brother. But ye, beloved, being up, be, building up yourselves on, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Go ahead. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Go ahead. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And we do pull you out of the fire. Go ahead. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And that is Jesus, because you get under in that, into that baptism, get under that blood so he can present you faultless. And before the, uh, uh, go ahead. To the, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. And that's what you do. You get in that baptism, that's what the Lord do. He's pulling you out of that fire. Give you a chance for eternal life on the right side of the kingdom. But let's back up to Acts, the 19th chapter. Acts 19, 1 through 5. Acts 19, 1 through 5. Acts 19, 1 through 5. Sometimes people ask, well, what if I was baptized? I wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus. What should I do? Go, let's go ahead, brother. That's 19, 1 through 5. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. Go ahead. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And, and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. So John only baptized with the baptize, baptism of repentance. He didn't baptize to the forgiveness of sin. He only baptized to the baptism of repentance. That's why people come to him confessing their sins and being baptized. And go ahead. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. See, he told them you got to get baptized on him, after him which is Christ Jesus. Go ahead. When they heard this, 
They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were bapt- they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus. Because you have to get this thing right, brothers and sisters. When you're dealing with the Lord, you have to do things the way the Lord say do it. You can't do it your way. You can't decide that this is the way you're going to do it because it's convenient. You have to do it the way the Lord say do it. Ain't no compromise. The Lord don't compromise with you. Let's go last place. Hebrews 10 and 26. Hebrews 10 and 26. 10 and 26. See, a lot, of, a lot of people, brothers and sisters, as I said before, they, didn't figure out, they couldn't figure out how to baptize all these people doing these televangelist ministries. So they, you know, they decided, well, we just tell them it's not necessary. So you was down there with one of the mother churches, and, 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 and you got baptized, and, and, pa- and Reverend get that cheese, or pastor stack them dollars. Just got you and sprinkle a little water in your forehead and baptize you in the titles, then yes, you have to get rebaptized. But you want to get it right. But Hebrews 10 and 26, last, last place. Go ahead, brother. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaining no more sacrifice for sin. So if we sin willfully after there's you receive the knowledge of the truth. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Because the animal sacrifice has been done away with. The Lord not going to come and die for us anymore. But go ahead. But a certain fearful looking for the judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. And go ahead. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. And just think about it. He that despises the Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. And that seemed merciless. Go ahead. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be, shall be thought worthy, who have trodden under the foot the Son of God, and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sat, sanctified an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So how do you just take for granted? The grace the Lord gave us when he came and died for us to give us access back to that tree of life. And you get that baptism, then you come out and act in the same way. You done trodden under foot the blood of the covenant. Because you told the Lord, I'm come under your covenant. Under the, new, under the new covenant. But go ahead, brother. For we know him that have said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And he said, God, the Lord say, vengeance is mine. If you do that, he said, I'm going to get you. Go ahead. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And it is a fearful thing, brothers and sisters, because you can't get away from this guy. No matter how you try, you cannot get away from this guy. Go ahead. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were elimin- elimin- illuminated, illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. And go ahead. Partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye become, became companions of them that were, that were so used. So, so, Paul, so, 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 so Paul said, you know, when, when you came into this truth, you endured all this stuff, affliction, being ostracized, being ridiculed, laughed at. And now you get to this point, now you're going to turn away? After you went through all this, go ahead. For ye had compassion of me in my, in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. That's what we're, going, we're, working, that's what we're working for, a better and enduring substance. Go ahead. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great 
recompense of reward. See, they don't cast away your confidence. Stay, stay confident that you're going to get what the Lord said he's going to give you. Go ahead. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And that's the key, brothers and sisters, that patience. You got to wait on it. They say don't cast away your, 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 your confidence. You got to have patience that you, and you can wait on it. Go ahead. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Yeah, but just a little while, the Lord ain't going to keep you hanging forever. Go ahead. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Go ahead. But we are not of them who draw back we're unto perdition. We're not of them that goes, we don't fall be like them that goes back into their old ways. Go ahead. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And you get baptized, you have to remain and keep unto the saving of your soul. But you did baptism, brothers and sisters, it is necessary. But there's some things you got to do. You got to believe, then repent, then be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then you got to continue in this thing. And don't give up because the Lord promised you eternal salvation, and he's going to give it to you. And I thank you for your time, brothers and sisters.